So, Berta, what are you doing? So right now, I'm actually going through the Excel sheet, which is uh, my tool to kind of keep track of uh, the papers we have. So basically, we have the issue that is going to be published in the number that we assign, um, author, and then here we have the, the whole process that is actually parallel to TealScript. So actually, in TealScript, we have the same kind of uh, procedure. So we basically get the submission. Then the second step is to send it to review, which is a double-blind review process. And then we copy edit the article, and then we prepare it for production. So this is basically what I'm doing now. Is it going well? I'm Berta Soleil and I'm the editor associate for the Torto Journal. And uh, I started, I joined the IRCT in January 2021, so pretty new, but uh, so far really exciting, I have to say. And uh, well, basically, you might ask yourself, what is behind the journal? So when we're publishing, what is the work behind it? Uh, who's the team behind it? I'm just one of the dots that are connected and well-functioning behind the whole publication process. We all learn a lot from each other, from the authors, from the board. Um, we have a great team behind. Uh, we count with um, very well-engaged volunteers who are helping us copy, edit, and proofread. Uh, a very engaged layouter. Layout and uh, yeah, and then Pau, myself, and the editorial board. Well, my name is Pau Perez Sales. I'm a psychiatrist based in Madrid, in Spain, and I'm editor in chief of the journal at this moment. And what does the torture journal mean to you? Well, it means everything. Uh, publishing uh, is every time more difficult. It's uh, because science has become a business. Science for, uh, uh, has always been public knowledge, has always been uh, open and free for authors, for uh, readers, and now it's a private business. You have to pay for everything. And Torture Journal is one of the very few journals that is still free for authors and readers. And uh, this is, uh, an, let's say, ideological and scientific commitment that is very important to me. I think that academic publishing linked to torture should be free, should be a priority, and, and torture journal is what represents that. Torture Journal is now 30 years old. As editor during the first years, I, Henrik Markusen, have the pleasure to send you some celebrating words. Torture Journal was, from its first origin in 1991, launched as a quarterly newsletter for messages 
dialogue and news about human rights. As an editorial policy of the IRCT, it was distributed for their members as well as to benefit for other health professionals to give more and optimal knowledge and concern for torture, rehabilitation, justice, prevention and research. It was, in my opinion, a goal during the following years to see Torture Journal in a more established international position. Therefore, it was a meaningful ambition for me, as well for changing editorial members, to provide and equip Torture Journal as a core international journal. Therefore, the editorial process ought to be subjected to a, to a review procedure based on two peers on biomedical data and a swift editorial decision. This is a torture journal after I left, um, but at the time I was here we introduced uh, the perspectives pieces um, and you can see in this, in this edition um, there were three perspectives pieces that was in 2019. Yeah, I worked out the other day that while I was here, I worked on eight journals, and each of them were between 72 and 158 pages long. So there was quite a lot of proofreading to do, <laughs> and quite a lot of work for POW as well. <laughs> I used to work here at the IRCT from 2015 to 2018. My name's Nikki Whitcomb and I was editorial assistant and then I was assistant editor and when I worked here we had physical copies of the torture journal and they used to be delivered here in big piles. So the torture journal meant a lot to me both professionally and uh, personally. From a professional point of view you could say that its multidisciplinarity was very interesting because you got forensic doctors, medical doctors, social workers, lawyers, all together in a room, and they had to try and agree, and that sort of tension was very intellectually stimulating. Also, from a professional point of view, uh, the torture journal's role was interesting, because within academic publishing, uh, you often have um, a focus on impact factor and particular writers, write particular articles and so on and so forth. Whereas the Torture Journal has this challenge of capturing data and what goes on on the ground with research. And it does a good job of connecting those two worlds, if you like, and bringing them together. Torture Journal is unique because it covers a wide range of highly significant topics in relation to human rights, consequences of human rights abuses, and ways that this can be met. And what makes it so special is the continuous line throughout in every single edition, it raises the issue of assistance, of health and rehabilitation, or rather, what does it take to get life back on track after torture or ill treatment? What must be done to restore life and dignity? And what are the obligations at the national as well as international level to ensure the rights of victims of torture and their loved ones? First of all, I want to congratulate the journal on this fine occasion, marking 30 important years as a very valuable contributor, participant, and innovator in the field of torture, torture prohibition, prevention, and rehabilitation. Congratulations and all the best for the coming 30 years. I am Nora Sveos, Professor Emeritus at the University of Oslo, Norway, and specialist in clinical psychology. Throughout my career as psychologist, I have been engaged in work with refugees and in particular victims or survivors of torture. As part of my clinical work, as part of my research and in advocacy work. I was member of the UN Committee Against Torture for eight years and in 2014 I was elected member to the Subcommittee on the Prevention of Torture, where I'm still a member. I have followed the Turtle journal, Torture Journal very, very closely. I have most of the issues in my bookshelves and I'm today member of the ad advisory board. And from time to time, I review articles. I have written a couple myself and I've written some book reviews. 
but it is not only descriptive or analytic with respect to these topics. Even if it's a strongly based research journal, it communicates a very strong message, a strong message related to the need to fight, the need to document and the need to act. And we're looking through the journal over the years. It has also proved that although it's developed based on a medical or a mental health platform, so to speak, it can never be accused of medicalizing these issues or narrowing, narrowing them down to health issues alone. And I say this because the wider perspectives are included, such as the traumatic effect of impunity, the need for justice, and the importance of redress in all its variations. published uh, articles about different torture methods, recently used torture methods, uh, therapeutic methods elaborated by the different centers, best practices, uh, what were and what are strongly recommended uh, to use in the psychological, psychiatric or rehabilitation practice of the therapists and activists of the different centers. Uh, hello, dear everybody. My name is Lila Hardy. I'm a psychiatrist, psychotherapist, and the medical director of Cordelia Foundation. Uh, in 2015, IRCT has turned to me if I feel like being the editor-in-chief of Torture Journal. My intention was to give an in-depth view into the, the individual work of the different centers and the global network and the collaboration of the centers in order to fulfill our mandate to eradicate torture all over the world. At the end of the journal, there were short debates about the article, about uh, different articles. Uh, it was really facilitating the progress with the journal as uh, people couldn't only publish their ideas, but they had to calculate that their publication will be criticized and the others, the readers, will express their opinion. This is another journal I worked on while I was here um, and you can see that there's a there's a debate here. Um, somebody's written a comment. Hans Straminski Pedersen has written a comment um, on a, a earlier book, and the authors have responded. And then he's responded. No, I don't think they did agree, but I can't really remember the ins and outs of it, to be honest. <laughs> so then in 2006, the National Library of Medicine accepted Torture Journal to be indexed and included in Medline databases. As an important part, Torture Journal was attributed as the only scientific journal with focus on torture and as such an essential activity for the ICT. I left the ICT in October 2011 and can now, as retired, with satisfaction observe that Torture Journal is doing very fine and fulfill its mission on rehabilitation and prevention on torture. 
I thank you and wish for all a continual fine birthday celebration. When we're indexing, we basically need to code and create an entrance. For example, here I need to create an entrance for the author of a specific article. Then I, create, I enter the name, the affiliation, correspondence, and then I close. So this is kind of a coding system where we get all the metadata from each one of the articles into the XML file. And then this XML file, by uploading it to FTP, which is the transfer protocol, then it kind of transfers that information into PubMed and EBSCO, which are the two indexing databases. Sounds easy. It, it, it is uh, time consuming, but uh, if you do it with love, <laughs> it's not that difficult. Yeah, and it's very automatic. How do you usually do the indexing? So I normally do it in the evenings when I'm calmed and I play some jazz music and I just start typing in and uh, creating the XML and then yeah, take it easy and do it with patience. If we look back to those times when I began my activity uh, and if we compare torture journals then with torture journal now it has done and, and gone through a long long way it enriched with many many details new practices changing new ideas it became a forum of ours to work better, to think more, and to fulfill, to achieve better for the survivors of torture all over the world. Thank you for your attention. You see the journal, the evolution of the journal with time, uh, you see that there are some topics that go once and again, and we are repeating um, topics that were already covered 15, 20 years ago. So there is a lack of evolution in the field. And I think that uh, this is part of the duty of the, of the journal, the, the duty to foster research, to try to open new avenues of reflection and not just publish what we receive, but trying to expand knowledge. And this is uh, part of the work we do, uh, which is trying through the editorials, trying through um, commissioning reviews to uh, think how torture has been changing during these years, which are the new challenges for research, and try to propose of the, our uh, readership on uh, how to evolve the, the thinking and, and research on the topics. Could you tell me a bit about the new edition? The last Yizu, it's, it's an example of a topic that um, has been uh, neglected in, in research. There are uh, many uh, um, sources of information that uh, uh, defend that the suffering of the persons who are uh, uh, in enforced disappearance or, or the suffering of the relatives of people who are uh, submitted to enforced disappearance are of enough severity to amount to torture. Now, what we have done is to gather three, it's to gather two key persons, Juan Mendez, a former writer on torture, 
and Bernardo Hain, member of the Working Group of Enforcer Disciplines, and to make them think together and to uh, put together the pieces of the puzzle and uh, make a clear statement on, uh, on the topic that, that enforced disciplines is uh, in most cases torture. And we have gathered in, in this issue seven papers, four papers more awaiting to be published in the next issue, 11 papers of field workers, people who are in different countries uh, that provide information, documentation, reflection, reviews, supporting that idea. That's an example. We use the, the torture journal to provide a solid basis uh, for, for uh, this. We are celebrating the 30th anniversary of the journal and our excitement comes from two different reasons. One is because the journal has been the vehicle that has facilitated the intercommunication among the centers mm -hmm. around the world, bringing opportunity to share experiences and knowledge accumulated through the years by each one of the centers affiliated to the IRCT. Galvanizing the movement to achieve a world free of torture. The second reason is because due to its, its scientific rigor, the journal has become a reliable source of knowledge, giving support to improve methods in the treatment and rehabilitation of torture. In that sense, our modest contribution has been collaborating, contributing articles and reporting on our findings. Once more, on behalf of Harlan Alliance International and the Marjorie Kobler Center, we say congratulations on your 30th anniversary. I can say that to me, the thematic issues have been of special significance and some of these earlier issues are practically worn out because they have always been with me on travels, on meetings and different kinds of events. I will particularly mention the thematic issue from 2005, two and three uh, on politically motivated torture and its survivors, a desk study um, by Jose Quiroga and James Jerison. I don't know how many times I have used this in the context of teaching, writing, and even arguing in the UN CAT. I've also carried around the thematic issue on access to justice and reparation. And this was also very inspirational when I was working with the general comment number three on article 14 on the obligation to provide redress under the Convention Against Torture. Also the issue on children and torture has meant a lot uh, to me, highlighting the importance of seeing the children's situation and the very important one, of course, on doctors and torture. All examples of earlier issues of the journal that I've kept very strongly together with me all through my work. These are more than 10 years old, but this does not mean that what comes afterwards is not equally important because all the articles, every single issue just gives us something new and something very meaningful. The editors are fantastic. And I want in particular now to highlight the very interesting profile and development in the hands of our present editor, Paul Perez Salas, his engagement and trust in the important role of the journal must be mentioned and praised today. Also his willingness to, willingness to encourage contributions from professionals and researchers not necessarily connected to Western universities or institutions. So congratulations, we need the journal for its clear and strong voice and for its important aims and objectives. Thank you. There are uh, a lot of persons who are first line workers that uh, are working with survivors that are not used to publish, are not used to um, do research, and we help authors. And that's something I'm uh, quite proud of. We help authors and sometimes uh, we uh, uh, even uh, mentor them in the process of writing their first paper. So uh, this means helping in a style edition, this means helping in structuring the the paper, it's a process of walking together. And 
we can say that 40% of our papers are written by authors which never published before. And they, for the first time, they can share their ideas. My name is Habasaide Omaumi Babatunde. I am a faculty member at the Center for Peace and Strategic Studies, University of Ilori, Nigeria. I am actually one of the author of publication of um, an article in Total Journal in 2018, and I had a very fantastic experience uh, with Total Journal. The journal meaning us, me, because they helped me to I produce high quality paper. They guided me thoroughly through the publication process. They assisted me, they even provided some um, materials to be able to ensure that I produce a very high quality paper. The title of my publication is The Efficacy of Traditional Cultural Practices in the Rehabilitation of Victims of Torture in Nigeria's Niger Delta. I, I always remember a woman from Nigeria that uh, sent us, it was four years ago, a, a draft of a paper on traditional healing for, uh, for, women's, uh, for women survivors of rape and uh, uh, how uh, they work it uh, with the perpetrators and with the victims in, uh, in the healing process. I think it's a, a really wonderful paper giving new insights on a very complex topic. So uh, um, I think that um, uh, many times the academia is, is a closed space with people that have big grants that devote themselves to, to research. And uh, it's like, you know, it's uh, out of the, of the reality and, and the reality is there. And what we have to do is to make research easy for people that have things to say. And this is providing assessment, providing funds, providing a space for explaining things. And my first learning is that when my main learning is that when you provide this to, to people who are working with survivors, you are surprised by what you get, which is, you know, uh, things that come from truth, come from, from the field, something that you would never think from the university or from a, a European research center. And since the publication in 2018, I have received fantastic feedback from various journals who also want me to publish in the article. I want to appreciate the anonymous reviewer, the supporting editorial board, as well as the editor who went out of their way to support me to ensure I publish a quality paper. And that paper is one of the major work I have published. And since then, it has helped to improve my uh, research productivity and my capacity to, pro uh, to publish, to produce high quality paper. So I appreciate Tosha Journal's support for emerging scholars like me. So I think that's our commitment. Our commitment is uh, trying to have fresh, fresh new ideas adapted to new times, to new challenges, and to uh, perhaps be a kind of a typical journal. But uh, this way of being a typical is what makes us more proud of what we do. So this is one of the reasons why we're actually, we actually decided to stop printing uh, the journal because we had a lot of paper left. Um, and well, basically for environmental reasons and budget reasons, we, we decided to stop printing. So now the journal is gonna be available digitally open access so everybody can join um, with internet. And what are you going to do with those? So those, we still need to figure out um, what to do with them, but surely I think we're going to give them as a gift or maybe, for example, when we go and visit um, some members around the, the world, then we can bring that as a present and they can keep it. Christmas is coming up. Yeah.
So these are the old issues that we're gonna be scanning to then get them digitized and then end up with the full collection, digital collection for everybody to read and access from anywhere in the world. Torture journal for everybody. <laughs> so let's start the digitizing process. Let's get one of the very old issues. First, we scan the cover. Yes. And you have to do each page individually. Yeah. So now I go to my email. Very yeah. sharp. So this is the cover. All right. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. And let's see the second one. It worked! It worked! It worked! Two in one! That's marvelous! <laughs> now, all these are well scanned and will be available online. 